Brrr. Hello, R- Raya residents. No, no, I could talk. I. Babe. I hung up. I don't. I don't know who that was. <gasps> Time. Not fast enough, Rye. Never fast enough. You. How are you gonna? How are you gonna pet a blobfish with those numbers? Hey, how are? Oh, you didn't see me here. Hey, welcome. Welcome to the hole in the pen cap. This is. Uh, my podcast, I'm Ryer Cameraman, uh, stand-up comedian, uh, unicyclist, lover of pugs, um, general uh, kind of odd figure. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you made it. I wasn't sure if you're going to make it, uh, but thank you for stopping by. This is the first episode of The Hole in the Pen Cap, working title uh you know uh working working really working really hard uh working title i think that we will keep it i like it because the hole in the pen cap is kind of just it kind of just means it means nothing it's obscurity right i love a good uh i love being relatably unrelatable that's what that's what kind of the whole thing is right the hole in the pen cap uh that's a thing that you never think about or maybe those red balls outside of Target, or uh, longevity of an etch a sketch, right? Those little pencils without the erasers that you use in art class. These are all symbols of Ryer, I suppose. Uh, the hole in the pen game. Maybe we'll come up with some fun abbreviation. T H I. TP. Thitp. Hey, welcome to Thitpa. Uh, it sounds that sounds maybe like some sort of activist group. Uh, and as we know, that's not me. I'm not. Uh, definitely wouldn't be an activist. I. I'm terrified of everybody. Thank you so much for coming. I am so excited. This podcast is going to be kind of whatever. I don't exactly know yet, but I do want to. Uh, I want to get better at at talking, you know, to people. And you'd say, "Hey, Ryer, there's another chair here." Yes, there is another chair here. Uh, will it be used? I don't know, but I like to have the option, right? It's fun to have. Hey, maybe maybe you use your imagination, right? They could come sit down. Uh, maybe you're, you're pretending there's an alligator. Who am I to say you can't do that? I'm Ryer. That's why I thought we already covered that. But yeah, no, maybe someday we'll have uh, a guest on here. This is a table from Hobby Lobby. Um, because, you know, why can't, why can't that be my hobby, right? Going to Hobby Lobby. I love, oh God, God, I love Hobby Lobby. They, uh, I got this pretty cheap. It was probably, probably like 60% off what it normally is uh, because sometimes Hobby Lobby kind of just gets desperate, I think, and they just really undersell themselves. They'll be like, you know, like one day you go in and a couch is like $200 and the next day they're like 14 14 and we'll throw in pretty much anything you can have anything uh they really i don't know why they get so i mean it's a fun store it's a good store it's priced pretty reasonably i think but i love craft stores uh personally you know a good anywhere i can go get puzzle glue uh you know i never just to make it so i never have to take that artwork apart I'm not sure if this is going to get, uh, I don't know what kind of podcast. You'd say maybe political commentary. I don't, uh, I'm not very involved in politics. I try to be. I hear uh, little, you know, murmurs of things that have, I know there was just a thing with the Nickelodeon guy and kids' feet. 
I don't know his name. I don't know uh, exactly what happened with the fear. So, so how do you comment on something that you know so little about? Kind of just like I did, right? You just bring it up. And when you're alone, you have no one to, what was that? What, what, was, what was that? You have no one to question. That's kind of a fun thing about being alone is nobody really questions your thoughts. So you could really, anything could be real when you're alone, I suppose, right? Uh, oh, we're, America is in a state of, of uh, destruction. Okay. And that's it, you know, you, oh, yeah, I guess. Uh, well, I've been having a fun, let's start with me, you know, in actually in full, in full transparency, because that is uh, my favorite kind of transparency. Um, this is the third attempt at making the first episode. I, uh, the other times I've just maybe not, I like the first time I didn't really like the background. Second time, uh, you know, something about kind of just the quality, uh, I didn't. So, so we're trying it again and we're going to see how this works. I'm pretty, I do, I definitely have, uh, aspects of OCD, right? Like where I just need things to be a certain way, but it's never like a good way. I mean, not good, but it's never like... When people think of OCD, I think they think of like uh, clean or organ, you know, kind of simple. Uh, no, it just has to be right, whatever right is in your head, right? Like maybe uh, the vitamin water has to be sitting on the right side of the dresser uh, or the, you know, or something, something of that extent, I suppose. So, well, hopefully this will be right. Um, but yeah, I've been having a fun, a fun week. It, today is uh, Friday, and I've been watching my friend, my friend's dog, Grant Adcock, hilarious, super funny comedian and awesome. Love him. He's so great. I'm watching his dog, Sadie, uh, for a few days, and she is probably, well, she's sweet, but she's, something's going on. And I'm not judging because look at me. But if you could think of me, maybe, maybe we, maybe that's it. We have a lot in common, really. She is, uh, she's very obsessed with tennis balls in a way that I've never seen a dog be obsessed with tennis balls. It's like, um, like, like every waking hour, uh, every second, there needs to be a tennis ball present and I uh last night I slept on the couch because I got really scared of myself awkward I'm right here <laughs> I can hear you yeah last night I got uh, I started having a panic attack uh and so I was like I'll sleep on the couch I don't do that all the time and it's not always when I have a panic attack. sometimes I just want to sleep on the my roommates are we have a we have an understanding Right. It's kind of like this uh, give and take, this mental illness Jenga where everybody, you know, uh, like one one of my roommates has a flower pot full of dog hair for the birds. OK, I have nine mirrors and they all have names. Uh, my other roommate sometimes comes into my room uh, and goes, Hey, do you want to hear a poem? Yeah. Yes, I do. I always do. God, I love poems. I've been writing. I love to write kids' poems, too. I just think they're so fun. I had a melted uh, popsicle in my room the other day, and I wrote a poem about it uh, called Pony the Popsicle. Um, and I put it on Instagram and there wasn't a lot of there wasn't a lot of engagement with Pony the Popsicle poem, the Pony the Popsicle poem. Uh, but that's under I understand I get it. That's you know getting people to like the things that you like is hard. 
like how do you know that you're um i i don't know i don't know what other people find fun i think that's my issue right it's like when i remember one time uh when i first moved to austin i i invited a few people to go bowling um and the group was mostly sober and um not really people that enjoy it didn't seem like everybody was you know maybe if you're super into bowling but it was just a group of a friend with you know no direct connection to bowling and it's everybody seemed to have a horrible time because that's not a it's not something you bowling is not a good social activity because while somebody is bowling the other people are sitting and then you get up and you keep getting interrupted to go bowl and and you know maybe you clap you go yeah you did straw Sp- oh you got a split <laughs> what are you gonna do about what are you gonna do about that well, I'll probably just hit one of them or maybe none or it's it's exciting I guess it's better to do alone I would go bowling alone I would do a lot of things alone though I don't I don't mind isolation I love people I love friends I want to I want to get better uh at engaging with people and finding things they enjoy right like for my my birthday uh, a couple months ago I had a game night party where uh I really didn't uh we we had we had like two games and I was thinking other people would bring games nobody really brought brought games as somebody did bring chess so that's that that was good but other than that um I realized a I don't I don't own games, and B, I don't really like games. So why did I choose this? I also really don't know how to play many at all. Um, you know, I was that kid that, like, you would give me Monopoly and be like, yeah, you want to play? And then I would just start, um, I would make, I would have the little figures play Duck, Duck, Goo. Like, I would make another game within the game, and that would be the new game, you know, or you maybe you give me Jenga and I start building a a pizza shop. And they go, oh, are you playing? J-? Yeah, I'm playing Jenga. Oh, w- what? I, you don't I don't think you're supposed to. I'm playing Jenga. Oh, no. I, I, I lost, but I also won. Because I'm the only one playing. The only one playing. I got a, uh, I got a really bad sunburn this weekend, or this week, because I, uh, I just finished recording a video with uh, a few, a few friends. Austin local videographer Adam Buckeister, um, Union Brooks. They they're helping me make this video of uh, it, it's to help. It's to help me promote a show that I'm, I'm headlining uh, the Red Room at Cap City on April 13th at 4 p.m., which is a difficult time to advertise for uh, because it's so early. And I, so I'm trying to figure out ways to get people that I'm excited for it. So we made this, we made this video where, and it'll probably be out by the time this comes out. So I'll, I'll just explain it. But it's, I'm uh, kind of talking to myself in the mirrors and then I uh, I kind of end up like chloroforming myself and becoming a tree do you follow uh, yeah and I, I that's what I end up doing and so I don't know how this is gonna go it, it was very fun to make it was fun to make it was uh, also very stressful we did two days it was a two-day shoot uh, the first day was like seven hours. The second day would be like four. Um, it's eleven if you're counting. But uh, and I and I said and I got tree makeup and I didn't really like. I liked the makeup. The makeup was was beautiful. But I guess I kind of have like a claustrophobia thing, maybe. But it, I just didn't. I started kind of feeling like really nauseous, and uh, the. When they were putting on my makeup, they, asked, they were like, hey, so you're not allergic to latex, are you? I was like, no, my mom, but my mom is severely allergic to latex. 
Uh, so I kind of had that in my head of like, oh, I wonder if I am. Because I've never like applied latex directly to my face. So we'll see what happens. So I might, I don't think that was, a, I just got really, at one point I was in a tree and I just started kind of hallucinating and like, and I was stumbling and, and just dropped branches. It was not, um, but the video is going to be good, I think. So I'm excited for that. You know, I, uh, it's fun to make videos. It's so much work, especially for like the, the editors and everything like that. So I'm so glad I have, uh, wonderful friends that want to do that. I used to want to be, um, in movies when I was a kid, cause I did theater and I love, uh, I loved theater. I, uh, you know, I, I love that fake it till you make it kind of mentality, right? Of like, oh yeah, you know, we all kind of know we're inadequate, but let's, let's just try, you know, it's really a fun kind of avenue. It's a fun, uh, what's the word, gateway into cross-dressing. At least for me it was, I think. Um, like I would, I would play the part of like a man, you know, pretty much every role I ever had was me being a man. Which is fun. I mean, it was by request mostly. Or kind of just pretending to be volunteering because the, cause most of it, you know, is mostly girls that did the plays. There weren't a lot of boys that would sign up for the plays. So it would be like, oh, God, oh, no, who's going to play the dad? Um, well, I, you know, I'll take one for the team if you need me to wear a suit. Uh, yeah, it was just kind of this weird thing. And sometimes sometimes they really wouldn't want me to. They'd be like, no, no, we have... there. Adam, we'll have Adam do it. I mean, we have we have boys here. It's like, no, you know, I'm just kind of, well, I've been in the game a little longer than Adam. I just think I would, like I would start kind of shitting on the other kids, selling myself. Be like, oh, you know, I just really think, I read, you know, looking at the script, I have the correct build for this. It was odd. It was strange. Um, but yeah, you know, that was kind of a fun way, I think, for me to explore that aspect of myself, that uh, gender dysphoria, which I think there are, you know, I think there's lots of different types of dysphoria, and a lot of them are uh, kind of accessed, or at least a lot of them are work, worked through uh, kind of in theater, I think, because you do get to pretend to be other people, which is, uh, if you think of it, kind of um, concerning maybe to the kids that are in theater like oh yeah you know it's it's so fun I, Charlie just he he loves pretending to be people that he's not oh well that that's healthy let's uh let's tell that to the pediatrician yeah, it's not. I mean, that it's an interesting group of people, theater people. It's it's a fun. Uh, it they remind me of the unicycle community too, because I unicycle. Obviously, um, you could tell by my. I don't know what you could probably tell. Maybe you could you could tell by the fact that I just told you, but I do unicycle, and I grew up. Uh, I did I did it growing up, taught myself. When I was pretty young, maybe like eight, I think. Um, and yeah, it's a similar community, the unicycling and the theater community, uh, because it's there's a there's an amount of pride that's kind of unwarranted. You know, that's always fun when people are. Uh, and honestly, with the unicycling, I think it is somewhat warranted because it's it's not an easy thing to do. It's very difficult. Unicycling is difficult, especially when it becomes like competitive or, uh, you know, there's the trials, mountain, things like that. Um, but it looks so ridiculous, you know, unicycling, like you don't, bringing a unicycle to a skate park never turns out well. It never works out. I mean, Yes, it is. It looks cool, but you're still going to have, I mean, you're going to have kids come up to you and, and be like, hey, 
What happened to the other wheel? It never had one. You know, uh, right? Or like making fun of you. And it's like, hey, buddy, you think I can't ride a, I can ride a bike. You know, when you see a kid riding a bike and, <laughs> and they're laughing at you. You think I started with this? That's uh, funny. Yeah, it's like maybe like if you were doing algebra and then somebody, you know, in second grade math was it, it's not I'm not saying. Yeah, you know, see, I ha I also have this unnecessary pride, I think, in unicycling because it is it's just any. Um, it's a very niche group of people that I think have. Uh, we have been made fun of quite a bit because it's a ridiculous thing to do and it's not. um it's what's the word? Uh, efficient? It's not efficient. Riding a unicycle anywhere is uh, significantly slower and harder, I think, probably than walking. So I get it. It is funny. But yeah, you know, I think in theater, you kind of have that too of like, uh, you learn to be so uh, dramatic. Because it's, you know, a lot of times, especially as kids, you don't have like microphones or anything. You're just in a room and you're, you know, and you're told to project. They'd always say like, make it so the grandma in the back can hear you. It's like at that point, why are we always seating the grandmothers in the back? Right? That's a problem. Why don't we put them in the front? That seems like a good solution. But they would, oh yeah. Like, so, so as a kid, you learn to project you know, and to kind of just yell all the, you know, you just, just to be ridiculously loud. Which makes that hard to kind of transfer into life because then you're the kid that um, is too loud and doesn't really want to be themselves. So it makes, uh, it makes it a little bit harder, I think. I think I did, I think I finally gained real confidence when I started wrestling uh, in high school. And it, I was not good. I was not good. I was just kind of unreasonably determined uh, to be good. Hopefully, you know, I just had this unjustifiable uh, motivation to continue um, and potentially get better. I just, I wasn't, I really, uh, I was not very good. And, a bit, and I had like, I, I think it was as, it's asthma, but it's also like, panic induced asthma I think I would just get really anxious because I would know that I was going to have an asthma attack and then I would just have a panic attack that would turn into an asthma attack so I was just like this asthmatic uh like chubby kind of not really just like very odd girl that was uh going up to to guys and be like hey you want to go you want to, I mean, in rest, not like in the hallway, but maybe that too. I don't know. I mean, I was kind of, I think I was just trying to be, when you're trying to be confident, you're really not. I feel like, like, you know, that, uh, it's the same thing of like when some people are so, some people are so confident there's, it's like this undeserved confidence, which, uh, it's hard to understand, right? How you could, I don't know if I, uh. I don't know if I even understand uh, deserved confidence because how do you confidence is scary because at some point maybe you stop uh, you stop being good at something but you don't realize it and you keep being confident and then and then you just are crazy right that's scary to me I think but um yeah I want to be more confident I think I think it's gonna be a process of like figuring out who I am uh, which is hard. It's hard to understand what you are, I think. Um, I, I'm a masculine woman. Woman, right? I'm a masculine woman. and uh, But, you know, I feel like now being a woman that looks like a man is... Uh, everybody just thinks you're on the process. You're in the process of becoming a man, right? Um, the, like, like I've, they'll, be, they'll come up to you and be like, hey, so you... You saving up? F for what? 
are you, you know, you're transitioning? No, I've, I've arrived. Stop the bus. This is my stop. We're, we're on a highway. Open the doors. I want to play with the cones. Uh, yeah, why can't I just stay like this? You know what I mean? Like I can, I could just be, because everybody, I feel like there's kind of this feeling of you either have to go, let's use the bus analogy, you either have to go all the way back to uh, womanhood or you have to go all the way, you know, to Manville or whatever. Why don't we just stop here? I'll get out. I'll put googly eyes on the traffic cones. I'll make a colony. Right? Why not that? Why don't I teach those, you know, that we'll call them the rhinos. Right? Like, right, right. You know, why can't I um, put googly eyes on index cards and uh, make a small village? I'm waiting. Uh, that Yeah, that's a difficult, that's the thing is you don't have to be uh, what everybody has a stat. You don't have to follow the established rules, but you do have to realize that if you don't, people will uh, maybe hate you uh, or just be annoyed or uh, fearful or, but that that's what you take on when you do that. It's, um, which is scary. It's scary to be disliked by anybody. I think I, I struggle with it immensely. I'm a people pleaser. I just, uh, I think at some point I realized that people seemed most uh, pleased when I didn't, when I didn't try to please them or when I didn't speak really, you know, just got kind of quiet and uh, non-confrontational or not even non-confrontational, but non, uh, uh, just avoidant would be, I'm kind of avoidant is a good word. Like I'll, I'll see somebody, sometimes I'll see a friend, like somebody that's a close friend I'll get scared and I'll just like go in the bathroom and then I'll get scared to come out that happens that's happened before uh you know sit you know sitting in the bathroom for a good hour uh sometimes crying sometimes indifferent just waiting uh but it's gotten that's gotten a lot better that anxiety that um has gotten significantly easier I think but yeah, when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the gender stuff, I think it's all about what you uh, want to be, what you're willing to be. Um, I think I'm going to probably stay here because when you you know, I I do I definitely do want to be a man. I mean, I don't know, I don't even know if I what that means, though. Do I? I I think I've always had kind of the char- I wanted the characteristics that are typical of men. Yes. But um, I also don't think it's ever possible for me to truly become that. You know, the best I would ever be would be like a plant-based man. Like, uh, you know, oh, oh, like I can maybe, I kind of look like one. But you bite it and you're like, oh, I see what you did there. (laughs) Give me the normal one. Like you just pass it, you know. It's just, just kind of like, oh, it's good that the, it's good the vegetarians have that, but we don't, we're not going to eat it. But I'm glad it's around. I guess I don't know. It does feel patronizing, I suppose, like the pronouns and all that, uh, like almost like a little kid in the bathtub that's like shaving with the bubbles, like pretending, and the mom's like, yeah, you're, you know, you're real, you're, you're a man, like you're, you're, you're real. But everybody knows. So if everybody already knows that you're not one, and uh, why not just be what you are and make that a thing, right? I'll just create my own category, um, and we'll go from there. I think, but it's hard. To, yeah, I mean that's kind of an. It's so what a lot of people talk about. It. I, I get a lot of anxiety with like the bathroom stuff. You know, going into the. I use the women's bathroom. Uh, because that seems to be the right option. I, I'd imagine I can't use a urinal 
you know, and it, and I also look at people way too. I get, I'm a, I'm a nervous starer. So if I go in there, I'd just be like staring at, you know what I mean? And it's, so yeah, I, but I think the trans, uh, the issue with the trans women in the, you know, people don't want trans women using the women's bathroom uh, because we, I don't really, I guess we think they're going to like have sex with the women. Is that what? Is that what we think is happening? Maybe. I mean, maybe that have. I don't know. I I think we would notice though if that was. Is that happening a lot? Like more so than a normal environment. I mean, that happens. Unfortunately, that happens kind of everywhere. But, uh, but if that yes, I think maybe we do that on a case by case basis, right? If you have uh, if you're if you have sex with a woman in the woman's bathroom. Um, and they don't, it's not, uh, if they don't want it, maybe we say no more women's bathroom for you. Maybe we cut you out of there. Let's do it just when, you know, we don't have to do the whole group. Let's do the people that are doing it. Because I think we would notice you're not going to walk by a subway bathroom and not notice that that's happening. I mean, it's not a it's a sad world we live in. Let's not make it harder for everybody. But I also get the, it's kind of awkward. Like I went to, um, I went to like this, at, oh God, I have my energy drink. I'm trying to stop drinking them at night. Uh, I have an issue with that. I think it's just because I don't want to miss anything. Um, but yeah, no, I went to, it was like a uh, it was like a comedy open mic. I mean, it was like a gay open mic. Uh, not and it was it was good. It wasn't gay like that. It was uh, it was good and it was fun. And I went in there and uh, the bathrooms were like were gender neutral, but they weren't like a single bathroom. It was like the stalls. And I went in. There was someone else in there, and I did feel uncomfortable for whatever reason. Of like, oh, this doesn't feel. But I think that's also just an established norm that doesn't have it that's not necessarily um because it's a man I don't know I think you get used to it it's just something you learn really young and you get used to but fuck it I mean let's all just do what makes people happy I guess I mean that's not that's not true necessarily but I think if you I think it's good that we're talking though you know if you if you dislike sorry i think if you dislike someone i think if you dislike someone i think that if you dislike someone it is it's good to let them know right uh do it in a fun way though you know if you have a controversial opinion maybe display it publicly uh Maybe you put a you iron an NRA patch onto your five year old's Pikachu backpack. Send him on his way. Go educate the others. That's fun, right? Or let's say you uh, have some friends over for breakfast, and then you make pancakes in the shape of the developmental stages of the fetus. Oh, you're eating the. You're eating the 19-week-olds. They have eyelids. Is it worth it? I think that's fun. I mean, that's a good way to let people know. Uh, or you get, you know, like seven or eight, you know, garden gnomes. You paint them the major races. You put them in the uh, in your yard and you rank them. That's good, right? Is that good? Yeah, there needs to be a fine line. I mean, I, I wouldn't want anybody to dislike. I, I don't know. I think it's better to tell someone as opposed to, uh, I mean, don't, don't hurt them. But uh, let's open a dialogue. Everybody always says that. Let's just have a dialogue. Ah. Uh, which is a weird word for it, dialogue. It sounds like a play. I guess that would be fun to kind of like have your issues solved through a uh, a school 
a school play. I'm, you know, I don't even know what that, I want to use the bathroom, but I don't match the, the, the picture. And the other person's like, I, I don't like you. And it's just kind of fun. It's just kind of a fun thing. Uh, yeah, I think that would work. I think we should just kind of start uh, having more fun with things, right? Like I, um, why why do you have to aspire to be uh, a person, something that people usually are, right? Maybe you uh, you walk by a bike rack and you go, hey, I could do that. Why not, right? Uh, you, hey, uh, put your wheels in my gaps. You know, lo lock it up. We're in a bad area. It's 25 cents an hour. Why not do that, right? Uh, and then they come back two hours later and it's like, hey, so where's, what happened to my front wheel? Oh, I failed you. Somebody wanted to play with it. Or maybe you walk by a swimming pool and you think, why not me? That's me filling up. You got to turn off the hose so that it doesn't waste water. Uh, you know, tell me, tell me secrets. Put me in a hole in the ground. I'll be a time capsule. But, you know... Uh, Put me in front of the sun, dressed as a flower. Have me dance. I'm a solar-powered uh, flower, whatever that is, right? You can be, you can be uh, pretty much anything. That makes it fun. It makes it so fun. Hey, everybody, thanks for joining me this week uh, with the Hole in the Pink Cap. I'm Ryer Cameraman. I uh, hope you had fun. Thank you for... Uh, stopping by you can uh, you can you can check in with me at uh, Ryer Cameraman Ryer underscore Cameron on Instagram uh, I post dates and stuff there and I hope to see you next time thank you bye